And it's currently 67 degrees on the Lake Shore. Going up to I-78 with mostly sunny skies. Winds out of the west-southwest at 6 to 10 miles an hour. And overnight showers and thunderstorms might be developing overnight. There's about a 40% chance. Out of that, mostly cloudy skies. Winds around 66 degrees. Winds out of the south-southwest at about 8 miles an hour. And on Thursday, it'll be mostly sunny skies. High 78. And the winds out of the northwest at 5 to uh, 13 miles an hour. And the, uh, as I promised, the... Uh, Road diet report will happen every morning uh, right about 8.06, so tune in uh, this morning. There were four barrels knocked over uh, this morning, and uh, so there will be at least four cars looking for body shops in the Skagen area uh, going down there. I got through there really, uh, actually got through there very quickly this morning because it was going uh, well above the posted speed limit because keeping up with traffic. Uh, so they've uh, reduced it down to one lane uh, between Terrace and 7th Street and are not enforcing the, tra the speed limit. So, so what else is new yeah. downtown? Yeah. So they haven't done that. And the, uh, the, their, their, their ultimate goal is to reduce the amount of speed and you know, apparently the amount of traffic down there. And the uh, Unity Music Festival starts this evening, five o'clock, free night. So it's kind of, so the uh, the crowd is starting to build. Did you see them this morning? I know it was only yeah, maybe in about maybe thirty or forty people okay. when I went by. Uh, there was one there when I went by. Yeah, yeah they're only just like right by the Porta Johns. Yeah, uh, they they do put out Porta Johns for the people waiting in line. Really? Oh yeah, because it, this crowd builds. Well, then maybe I could wait in line someday. You probably could. Yeah, you wouldn't have to watch it. Yeah. It's a special geezer line. <laughs> yeah, but, well, no, it definitely is. So, so I mean, they've learned over the we years. We all belong to that line, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, and you're hearing Oscar Osbo yeah. <laughs> in the studio with Jim. Well, well, that's morning. the legendary Oscar yes, Osbo. Yes, yes. Who uh, I grilled early on when I met Oscar. Uh, come on, give me your real name. His real name <laughs> is Fred Berkowitz, yeah. but his, his stage, his stage name, name is Oscar Osborne, which actually yeah. turns out that is your real name. Yeah. What a cool real name. <laughs> I was going to put these headphones on, but I was afraid of something. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What, what kind of scary. We got the black ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. Put, I put those on. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. It's the ones with the wood grain. Wood grain. Oh, I see okay. those. Those are like from 19... <laughs> 26, yeah, they, yeah, well, but they're still working and they, they don't shed. <laughs> <laughs> 26. The wood gray ones. <laughs> I haven't seen those like that in a long time. And those were like pilots or something? <laughs> uh, wow. Well, anyway, um, the Unity Music Festival starts today, and it's a, it's a weekend long. They may have a little bit of rain on Friday, according to the, the forecast that's moving in, uh, but that doesn't it usually do anything to, unless there's lightning in the area. Mm -hmm. If it's just raining, um, they, they praise the Lord and it's raining, and right. you get together. Yeah. I and mean, you get together, and they, so it doesn't really stop that festival. They get cleansed. And they, well, there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, I mean, they're, they're in line uh, right now waiting for a free night. Uh, which the gates, according to their website, the gates don't even open until five o'clock. Wow! Uh, which ought to make the road night really interesting. About four, between four and seven tonight, of uh, people trying to get there for the free night, getting dropped off there with their chairs and with uh, uh, they can't bring in coolers, uh, but they can bring in folding chairs. So they've all got folding chairs, and the people that are down there right now have tents. Yeah. Uh, you know, so they've got to fold those up and take them with them, or take them back to their cars. Um, and parking, uh, the wood parking right now, Martinock looks like it was okay uh, uh, to park in. Uh, other than that, I don't know where you park in downtown Muskegon, except on the street. I, I, I gotta ask you too, though, that the whole road thing that they're going to be doing there, isn't that what they just tried out in Grand Rapids and found it failed terribly? Uh, they've tried it in a lot of places. Yeah. And it, and it um, we're not really sure. Well, Jim's got some ideas about the motivation for why they're doing this. Okay. Um, and it's a long-term, uh, you know, way of trying to get people to drive electric cars and bikes and. Oh and yeah. I mean those kinds of the long term. Well, it, it, long -term these are woke, woke agenda. These aren't fantasies. These are from the websites that they refer people. Oh to. sure. Oh yeah. You know, okay. the, they they are, and we know this. This is a federal funded program that funds many many organizations who want to make driving. Uh, frankly, a more of a bus. pain in the butox, okay. so that in fact people people will move into the cities sure. and use government provided uh, mass transportation. Um, but but aside from our assumptions, right. 
the reality is that the city of Muskegon geniuses, people far far wiser with with greater uh, assets than anyone sitting still in this studio. Pretty high, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they they have told us the reasons, and they listed the five Thank reasons, you. and we've talked about them before. My favorite one is, it's <laughs> it's financially, it's fiscal fiscally responsible because one lane of highway requires less maintenance and money than two lanes. Yeah. That's one of the five major reasons. Uh, yeah. But their reasons are ludicrous. Nobody believes them. See, that's the thing. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to yeah. lose credibility, pretend, make up a whole bunch of reasons why you're doing something well, that are <laughs> idiotic yeah, and tell people that's why I'm doing I mean, it. I, and you're going to lose all I, sorts I, of credibility. I love their use of the race car because it, the, the item number four is we've redlined the minority community in Muskegon by putting a highway yeah. between them and the lake. <laughs> and this we've cut off their access to that. And, so and, when and, and this, will, that, this will fix the the anger and the angst yeah, and the misery so, that was caused so, earlier. So when I when I read that, I went, "Oh, really? I, I didn't really. I never heard that before." Yeah. Uh, and so I I happened to be have some time on my hands, and I was going down uh, around uh, the the Adelaine Point uh, development down there, where Ryan Leitzma has really cleaned out the uh, the the old small bolt basin at Hartshorn Marina. He's really cleared that land out of there. And it's available for anybody to go out and walk on now, to go out and fish off of. So I, I was driving down there and I went, well, I, Ryan had said some things about people doing a lot of fishing out there. So I drove down there. There were 22 people fishing, 22 cars along this strip. Okay. 22 cars. I just got to the very end and went, you know, the, I didn't see any white people. Here, I see all minorities, so I'm going to stop and talk to some of the fishermen that are there. And I ask them if they've ever had problems having access to Muskegon Lake and, and fishing. And they, they praised Ryan up and down about how the, this has been just wonderful that it's opened this up. And I said, have you guys ever had any problems crossing Shoreline Drive or <laughs> uh, Webster or Muskegon Avenue? When it was, and they're going... They kind of look at me like, what are you talking about? John, John. I have no idea. They, they, they have an idea. They said, we're just, they're giving us some opportune spots to John, go fishing at so we don't have to go out to Pier Marquette. John, you're missing it, the entire point. That, that, we didn't you're, talking, anybody. you're talking to the people who made it across alive. The dead ones cannot stay. Oh, oh, those, those eight. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that the, was, that's one, of the, one of the five reasons for, uh, uh, really? from the, from the city council. It's yeah. going make oh, it, no, no. to make it safer because we're and killing they, people. And, and they have killed, <laughs> we've, we've killed on connecting roads and, and in the area, eight people have died. Hmm. Since what year? Since like 1950? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, actually, yeah. that was from the, the Spanish flu, three of them. Oh, well, might have been. From the Spanish well, flu back been. in 17. <laughs> it could have been. Not like 2017. Eight either. people have died in the surrounding area on connecting roadways. And you think that freeway in L.A. is a connecting roadway. Yeah. You know, come on. When you use those kind of things, and they, they gave this, actually submitted this to the Department of Transportation, and the Department of Transportation read it and went, eight people. Oh, that's a safety issue. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with this road. No. <laughs> Whatsoever. They used they used they used uh, terms like this area. They they are yeah, this they, area weasel words. But there's another interesting one. <laughs> that, now I don't know if I, I've not seen the city um, uh, portray these uh, particular devices as, as what I will oh, tell you oh, what they're the called. Oh, yes. But but uh, at least uh, uh, TV thirteen uh, calls. <laughs> one of the cool things is that in order to uh, create the road diet test. You right. need certain uh, devices of, of certain sort. And uh, apparently, according to TV 13, the city of Muskegon was able, through their geniuses and their connections with, with the, the people that really matter, to acquire a variety, a whole bunch of traffic control devices. And they've used these traffic control devices to, to reduce the lanes from two to one on either side. Now, the rest of us, and, and Oscar's given me that look that I know so well, we might have called traffic control devices orange barrels. <laughs> but but we, we, we went back to our thesauruses, apparently, at TV 13, and perhaps, uh, perhaps the traffic city. Control. And they are now... T maybe TCDs we can call them. Well, there's a bunch of young TCDs. TV no, TV why TV. not? Yeah, we call them TCDs. TCD. TCDs. And there's TCD plus if they've got a light on top. Oh, <laughs> 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 we 
we've got, you don't you have like a bunch of interns now at TV 13 anyway, <coughs> so they're all. I think that's all they've got. There. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Except for Juliet are, and, and George, I think they're all those interns. Those are information spewings morons. Yeah. <laughs> ISMs. You know. And, and the guy, young guy interviewed me for bike time, and I almost asked him, what high school do you go to? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's take a first break of the day. You've been listening to News Talk 1090 WKVZ, The Talk of Muskegon. We'll be right back. It's going slowing it in there. 67 degrees along the lakeshore, 21 minutes past the hour. And Oscar Osbo has joined us this morning. Uh, we're going to do a little videotaping after the uh, the show, and uh, I'm going to do an interview with you for, with you. Yeah. Uh, for a thing, a project that Oscar and I uh, we got involved in pre-pandemic. <laughs> yeah. A couple of years before the pandemic, we approached the uh, um, you know, Lakeshore Museum Center. Um, at uh, the County Museum, the Lakeshore Museum Center down on the uh, the corner of uh, 4th and uh, Clay in downtown Muskegon with the, with the big uh, mastodon in front of it. Um, and then we approached them about possibly doing an, ex an exhibit, an exhibition, an exhibit of... Uh, of uh, exhibition? I don't know if I want to do any exhibition. exhibition. But said, well, you never know. <laughs> it, it could be a live thing. But no, um, and uh, the, about the radio history of Muskegon. Right. We think it was significant and uh, because we've all seen a change in the industry uh, like the print industry has, uh, has changed and gone away from Muskegon. Right. And we've seen a, a move away from local DJs in Muskegon and the local news in Muskegon. So at some point in time, we're thinking that people won't remember what radio was like in Muskegon at some point in time unless we remind them. We you know we get together too with uh, some of the old jocks. I get together with some of my friends from the Sunny FM days and, and uh, Rock 95 days and all that stuff. And, and none of them are working in radio anymore. No, no, all these no. talented people, and they're all no. just you know, they're doing other things. You know, and the not... For the most part, the listenership of uh, our audience here remembers transistor radios, and uh, this time of year, taking a transistor radio to the beach. What is uh, that? Listening to, uh, what? <laughs> uh, uh, and listening to, you go down to Fair Marquette Park, you pick up WOKY in Milwaukee, uh, yeah. WGN in Chicago, uh, and I uh, listen to WTRU in Muskegon. You know, oh, back yeah. in, the, in the 60s, uh, that's what my generation uh, did. And, and uh, sometimes some people had some really big ones, radios. Uh, that they <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and you'd, 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 people would gather around. I mean, the old uh, beach place. Like a bingo thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or how about bovine bingo when well, that Sunny yeah, FM had yeah, that? Yeah, 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 bingo. And a lot of crazy things that were done at radio back then, yeah. you know. And, and now, now to watch some of the crazy stuff, you got to find something on Nickelodeon with the WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah. You know, but a lot of those things were local, and uh, we, we don't want them to be forgotten because they were part of Muskegon's history. Right. Uh, for a lot of, lot of different uh, reasons going back literally to the 1930s when WKBZ went live uh, from the Occidental Hotel building. Can you uh, you and I know about that, about that too because we did, I remember you and I were mm -hmm. a big part of the 70th anniversary of WKBZ right, right. way back. Way back when it was well, 70. Well, well, when Muskegon Wall was still open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muskegon Wall was still open, right? Yeah, we had that. I was in a tuxedo and everything. It was quite, quite the event. Mm -hmm. and. Then, yeah, anyway, <laughs> we won't go any further than that. But, I mean, radio obviously was a, was a huge part of Muskegon's history. And, yeah. and the entertainment um, and, and news and weather and all those kinds of things that, that contributed to this community. And we just wanted to preserve those memories of, of ours and, and really have the general public rem remember it as well. Yeah. And so we started working with the Lakeshore Museum Center. And then the pandemic hit and we got kind of sidetracked. and. Uh, then other things happened, like hurricanes in Florida, <laughs> with Randy Crow and myself, and I mean, I mean, there's a lot of distractions that have happened over the last couple of years, and we keep pushing out the schedule. But we re recommitted to uh, to doing something at the Lakeshore Museum Center, and uh, Oscar, you've been you've been involved since the day one of, of us proposing this, right? Of well, going, of getting some of the, the personalities from radio that had been involved in radio on video. <coughs> right, and one of the first ones I did was, of course, Cliff Martin. Right, who goes back to right. WKBZ days at UQ. Yep. Um, also, I was happy that I got the boatman, you know, Chris, yeah. because yep. you know, he passed away just recently with supposedly COVID. COVID, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yes, and you know, Don Anderson, who is part of WTRU. Oh, WTRU. oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, also, um, 
Andy O'Reilly who used to work here. Let's okay. see, we've got you, of course. Okay. Uh, Leonard, tomorrow I'll be doing uh, Walt Love, which was Chris Roberts on MUS when he was the, here. I mean, the, 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 the driving force be, behind WMUS, Tim Ackerhoff. Right, you know? Tim Ackerhoff, got Tim, got uh, Randy Crow. Right. Um, boy, so many of them. I, I, you know, we've got, um, I'm trying to remember everybody. Didn't get Jim Riley yet, though. Well, so. we'll, get, we'll get there. Well, I'm becoming a, a media legend. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, 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 the lowest <laughs> hourly pay in the history of radio. Of course, you've always been a legend in your own mind, but anyway, yeah. It's a <laughs> but, I mean, I mean uh, when, and the reason that you're doing this is to preserve the memories of, of, uh, of those of us that have been involved with radio right. or, and even had... Uh, well, we got Mark and Pam, too. And Mark and, and, Mark and Pam and uh, WMUS uh, legends. Uh, for a long time, we want them to remain legends in, in, in the, the community. Uh, my motivation was that I had an uncle that was, uh, my uncle Raul was very, and my uncle Raul and my uncle Paul were really involved in WKBZ in the early days, right. in the 1930s, and I, I wanted their memories to be preserved. Now you still have that, that recording your mother did too, right? Man? Absolutely, KBZ oh, days. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah, absolutely, on your program. Yeah. I know about the, the 70th anniversary and my mother's recollections of the Apple Avenue studio, right. which still exists, the building is still there on Apple Avenue and, and Wood Street, quite real close to that intersection. There, the WKBZ operated during the 1930s as an entertainment venue, but broadcast facility. Right. Um, and so we want to preserve those those kind of memories in in, in Muskegon and being a part of that. Um, and of course, the, you talk to anybody that worked at MUS or KBZ before here in this building, right? Or in the old building, they'll of course remember Maddie. They run Maddie before. Yep. Tim oh, yeah. start has a nice story about. When he started oh, doing Maddie, with Maddie, yeah, he had to break that. in the building. Yeah. Broke, <laughs> had to break the window to get into the yeah, I mean, Maddie and, show. And, and these are these are uh, legends uh, of Muskegon uh, that were awarded uh, many uh, legendary awards by the Michigan Association of mm -hmm. Broadcasters over the years. But we don't want those memories to. This is this is a part of Muskegon history that I mean I knew about Maddie, but not very much. You know, I mean, I mean, I knew about it because my dad had a drugstore in downtown Muskegon, and I heard the name. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever listened to her program back in. It was a Sunday morning gospel program. I, I ran it for about a year. <laughs> and and uh, when when you guys started talking about everything that she did and the the records she set for the amount of broadcasts in consecutive Sundays right. uh, for thirty plus years. Uh, that Maddie was doing this, and 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 with, and the kind of people she influenced, and and the and then the African American community to be involved with gospel music, and and those kind of the legendary gospel groups that came out of Muskegon because of her. Right. This is the kind of history that we need to tell, uh, Muskegon, and 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 there, there are quite a few others that went on from here, started their radio career on on from here, and went on. Right. Terry Ficarelli. Had, we got uh, Terry. We we haven't re really breached the sports guys yet. Well, I, uh, I, I talked talk to, talk to Jim Moyes, but we really didn't get a face to face. It was yeah. more or less just a phone in interview, and I always wanted to get him too. You know, he was here a couple of weeks ago. Was it? Of yeah, I ran yeah. into him at a Clippers game. You yeah. know, you, you guys are uh, he bringing does come an back incredible here. amount of, of history, and and I know Oscar, you've uh, video documented this stuff, and and John, you've really been driving, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the the push to get get a permanent location in the museum, but. What will what's the outcome that you're looking for, and and when might might we see it? Because with, you have all these his all this history, you've got video and you've got a, a, artifacts and things of that sort. What is your goal here? Do you, did you you want to have a display within well, what, what the, the museum? Just, yeah, what we've decided to do is do a featured exhibit. I mean, it'll be up for six months. Six months. Yeah. Uh, and it, it'll either begin late uh, last quarter of twenty four. Or early first quarter of 25, 19, or 2025, and, uh, and and it'll run for for six months. My my real goal is to get a permanent exhibition. Yeah, yeah. Take some of the things that we're trying to collect <coughs> and create a permanent. We well, kind of wanted to get almost like a podcast type. We you know, that's still in the back of my mind. Yeah, you know, it's still yeah. in the back of my mind. And Great we, idea. We haven't talked about it in any meetings yet, but I still, it's still the ultimate thing would be for me and put it down on Western Avenue at the Heritage Museum. Uh, down there and put a studio down there. I mean, all these studios you know, that, that aren't aren't running right now, they, they seem like they could donate like a board or something that they could, we could actually use, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And, and, and nowadays, right, and nowadays with the technology, you don't, need anything, you yeah. don't really need a lot of that. I mean, you, you need a Behringer a, board or yeah, a couple of mics and you're good to go. A couple yeah. of mics and, and, a, and an iPhone to record yeah. it. You know? yeah, right. <laughs> or, or to do if you're doing a live broadcast, especially if it's just voice and you're not sp sending a, a, a tremendous amount. Of, although the technology is really there right now for right. us to do live broadcast on our cell phone. Right. And I, that's what I do when I'm down in Florida. I, I've got cords I hook into my, my iPhone 11. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm able to run two microphones off of it. And I had phones. He's only got an iPhone 11. Huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's kind of, I've got, still got all the plugs yeah, for it. I, 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 yeah. I don't even know if they'll You can still plug it in. in. You won't, yeah, you no. still plug it in. Yeah. And, and, but it, and it works really, and it's really good voice broadcast yeah, quality. Yeah. I mean, it, it is all the digital network with the cell phone, uh, digital with the 5G set of networks. Uh, that are around. I mean, it is good broadcast quality. Right. I mean, you don't have to fool around with step switches and all those kind of things. Yeah. But, but I mean, again, that's the step switch technology was for broadcasting like football games and church broadcasts. And, and that, that's a, that's an old telephone company terminology. But well, buddy of mine does all his underwater filming with his iPhone 13. Yeah, so there, there you go. go. I, you well, yeah. 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 So 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 the technology is there for us to create a space. Uh, to saying uh, and, and make it look like a 1930s studio or 1950s studio. Yeah, yeah. We're probably going to be more likely to create a 1950s studio from what I understand. Yeah. And trying to find some of the old broadcast equipment is probably not going to happen. Yeah. Although that's kind of what the appeal is and why I wanted you to be on the air today too. Uh, prior to this, uh, putting that appeal out to people. If you happen to have somebody that was involved in radio and you've got an old piece of equipment sitting in your basement and you're saying, what am I going to do with that piece of junk? Uh, <laughs> and it may be too heavy to even move. Yeah, the old reels to reels right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm like reels to reels. I mean, uh, you, we found a, um, a wire recorder that I've got at home. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be part of it, or at least you know, donated to the museum. Cliff the, Martin remembers what, using one of those. I've yeah, never seen yeah, one before. A wire recorder uh, that they used in the yeah. 1930s and 40s that uh, was replaced by a magnetic tape and what we knew was reel to reel or then cassette and uh, eight track. Uh, but it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I still had a collection. You did too. Yeah, I'm I sure, did. Right? I did. Yeah, you. Well, you DJed a lot back then. So oh, yeah. you probably had a big collection. Oh yeah. <laughs> Always liked the click click in the middle of the song. It was yeah, great. There, there you go. <laughs> uh, we're gonna take our news break at the bottom of the hour here. Uh, we'll be right back. You've been listening to News Talk 1090 WKBZ to talk with us. Currently 68 degrees along the lake shore going up to I have 78 mostly sunny skies and an overnight possibility of some showers, uh, but clearing off for the day on uh, Thursday. And um, you know, on Thursday, mostly sunny skies, high 78 degrees. And we got an interesting comment. From well, we got an update from, from, from an insider, from, 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 from someone, someone who knows uh, Tim, well, pretty, Tim, Tim Lightman, no, clearly, yeah, so clearly Tim knows Crudden. more about, yeah, Tim about the, the inside events that, that go on in, in Muskegon County. We were talking about um, traffic control devices. And, and Tim apparently, uh, he dug deep into, into his cranial, and here, his <laughs> comment was, and I think this is in line, he said, the road diet has little to do, he didn't say this, but has little to do with what we were with, talking with about. traffic controls. Yeah. The, the road diet is a Daryl the Barrel family reunion. Who would have guessed? And he's and probably got very, he's a Christian well, and, and the whole family the, because of the unity. You may find a second one, uh, Daryl the Barrel, at uh, Pier Marquette Park this week. Oh, really? Another one from the Milwaukee Public Works. Well, there must be like bunnies across. because they certainly uh, seem to be multiplying. Well, they, they are. They're, apparently, those are they're doing some road dieting over in Milwaukee and they're getting get. Well, Tim, and thank you. Launched into Lake Michigan and then floating over here. Well, <laughs> that, 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 help for the it's good to know. Guess, so, so when you go by these traffic control devices, just smile to yourself. It's a Don't Darryl let road Darryl rage Darryl take over and and, and understand. The with the traffic control devices. Uh, uh, <laughs> traffic uh, control uh, <laughs> barrels are people too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've said for a long time we ought to put those traffic control devices on our state flag. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, we should. It's part of part of Michigan. I mean, the, the two seasons obviously are winter and, and road construction. Not, and now it's road construction and road diet. Road construction slash diet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was watching Channel 17 this morning. There's new construction that's going to begin this week on I-96 between Grand Rapids and Portland, mm -hmm. around the Ionia area, exit over there, and uh, they're going to use the zipper method. 
<laughs> What's the zipper method? The zipper method is they're not going to put out as many traffic control devices until you get almost up on the construction. Oh, geez. And then they're going to, because they want people to use both lanes until they get to the zipper. Yeah. And you then know, they're going to have alternating cars going through this. The zipper. That's a joke. The that, zipper. That is the biggest in, theory, yeah. in theory. In theory. In theory, it works good. It's like socialism. It's like, what yeah. a fabulous idea. <laughs> everybody will, will wait their own little wait time in their, in their yeah. timer in their head, and everybody will be courteous. It, as a practical matter, it is insanity. Well, and, and, and it, you know, it changed the language a little bit, but the kind of saying we used to have at the telephone company, you can draw a butt on, on a paper, on the board, on a blackboard. You can draw a butt on there, but you can't make it poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of zippers. If you think about how we change that, I, mean, I changed that, obviously, to, to, uh, so it won't get kicked off the radio. Right. But you can draw a butt on, on a piece of paper, but you can't make that poop, right. no matter what you do. And a lot of times that butt looks good on paper. <laughs> uh, it, does, it looks really good on paper. And road diet, diet, yes, road, yeah, diet, okay. road diets look good on paper. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Try to make it poop. <laughs> All right. Let's okay. get back to, <laughs> to, to, to more substantial <laughs> things like the oh, death Oscar, of radio. Oscar, Oscar comes in and I digress into yeah, uh, some, yeah, some yeah. of the, <clears throat> the yeah. times when, when I first started really in radio. Well, I, I didn't you know, remember the, the, kind of, the kind of nutty things that, that we, we did. did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, will that be part of this exhibition and this whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> that's where the fun is. Almost statutes until limitations. Well, you know, what I, you know what I miss, too, is TV 40. We used to have more fun there than anywhere else. Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> right before <laughs> Peggy White Knight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'd forgotten that you had you had my, our show that we did yeah. uh, back years years ago on the on TV 40. Yeah. yeah we were multimedia <laughs> superstars. That's right, yeah. You and uh, Mike. Yeah, I remember. Well, and, and you. With with the the uh, inimitable, um, the legendary Oscar Oscar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we had just as many. Yeah, we had uh, what at least ten watchers for that one, I think. At least <laughs> ten views. Oh, yeah. Well, we could count them on on, on my fingers anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had fun. We had we had a, we had, a we had fun. Uh, but it, it got to a point, Oscar, where. I was having a hard time on Friday mornings getting up and looking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a whole different change from radio. Oh, yeah. Uh, radio, where, you know, we were behind the microphone and, and everybody assumed for a long time ago, assumed that we had coats and ties on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, not true. Not me. Not me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, so again, uh, radio history wise, uh, if you've got anything in your garage and you know anybody that was involved with with radio and the history of Muskegon, uh, or or if you've got some memorabilia that you think is really unique, I know that was some some unique things. And I don't know if we're going to have a whole display of coffee mugs, <laughs> you know, or litter boxes, yeah. <laughs> or, or or things that were given away by radio stations over the years. But there may be some unique things out there. Well, I've got, there's always some swag that was. I, out I there. collected from uh, uh, David <laughs> Oliver, from who's the engineer of WGBU. Uh, um, we went to the old KBZ studios mm -hmm. over in Pontaluna because they're taking the whole thing down. Of course, that the AM station is going down and all that good stuff, and they're selling the property. But um, I've got the old on air. Um, okay. I've got the recording right. light, right. Uh, and what was which was in the production room. I got uh, uh, a tower light, tower the, light the very top KBZ. one, which is like seventy pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've got a, a couple of the red lights that are on the side of the the towers and I've got uh, some trans and just different pieces of stuff that's from WKBZ sure. the original right. back in Pontaluna so well, the original, and, and you, one you, you gave me a one one time and I still have it and it's going get, to get given back to the uh, the museum uh, the, the microphone stand oh yeah that has a WKBZ, WKBZ on it yeah which was actually found pictures of that exact uh, one that I have in my possession um, and they were going to throw that away too. No, it? well, no, the, you know they were going to throw that yeah. away. Uh, that was in the uh, the booth during the 1936 uh, exhibition that they had at the Mart Dock property wow. um, for the centennial celebration of the state of Michigan County of Muskegon centennial is 1936. Wow! And they had a big big deal. I mean, um, my, my mother talked about it when she was just getting out of high school and, and they had, uh, uh, I remember what the name of it was, but it was it was basically a, they had a rodeo, they had all kinds of different things, lumbering contests oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, down there, but WKBZ had a big booth 
Yeah, yeah. we've got pictures of that, and that's, that microphone stand is right there. Right. Oh, the those were the years of uh, a lot of things that they did to get get, get sponsors going and also oh, getting, oh, get people in, yeah. into, the of involved the radio. in the radio. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know what happened to all of the banners that were in there and this move. Uh, if we can get some uh, somebody like Randy Crone to reproduce well, some of them. But <laughs> I've got an old video, too, of uh, uh, Don Anderson, who was uh, part of WPRU back in the early days, uh, yeah. where they were riding around on little motorcycles with just a little bit of gas, and whoever ran out of gas first, they had, you know, like, bets on it going on it. These guys <laughs> ride around these little mini bikes, you know, for a Honda dealer or something. Who knows, yeah, you know. Yeah. But this was back in the 60s. You know, you know guys, uh, I know you're, you're working on other facets of, of the history of radio, which I think is absolutely fascinating and, and certainly important for Muskegon. But you're familiar with the, I forget the name of, of the organization, but that have been interviewing World War II vets, you know, the audible uh, the stories, right. and then the Korean War vets and, and Vietnam vets. It would seem to me that some of these stories of the fun times and the goofy things that, that were done would make a, a, a really great um, uh, archive, if you will, to save, because um, it's kind of hard to put it uh, th th on a shelf in a museum. Yeah, well, but it, the audio it, of, of your experiences would really matter, yeah, and the it, older guys. And the, and the audio, but I mean, this is what Oscar is attempting to do with doing the, the videos, is getting a, at least an extended, stories, an extended yeah. version, which we, they may take clips out of a lot of right, these. Right. Uh, but to have that available at the, uh, to be able to call all those up, uh, Jim, at the exhibit, uh, being able to say, okay, you want to listen to some WTRU uh, thing facts here, and maybe have Don Anderson talk, and you, you well, already you got always talk about the alley oop yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. You mean the alley oop situation. He was, he was the one bringing the ham beer up to the guy on the roof. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> These are great stories, yeah, guys, right. and a lot of a lot of us here in in Muskegon County, still, or or in other parts of Florida and other places will remember these things when they heard them on the radio yeah. back in oh, the yeah. day. Right. Yeah, you know, and even you know, what we think of as maybe uh, within our industry, Oscar, we think, oh, it was, that's not that, that significant. Uh, it's not, um, yeah, that is. Uh, that, it's not that significant, uh, but it's uh, a matter of, um, uh, it just happened, you know, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Well, 100 years from now, yeah, that's that's radio history. Right, I mean, right. Uh, Brian, Brian Worsham uh, working with Mark Dixon to throw punch keys in windows of cars. <laughs> <laughs> and, and getting stopped by the Grand, or Grand Haven police, you know, came up to him and said, what are you doing? And yeah. Brian said, you want a punch key? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he got off the hook by giving a cop a punch key. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> every, every cop can be bribed by some kind of a donut, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Let's take our uh, last break of the day. You've been listening to News Talk 1090 WKVZ, the talk of Muskegon. You know what I really miss and what I had envisioned when we started the show was a Richard Charles Ford kind of a show. Oh, yeah. That was what I envisioned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It never happened. <laughs> he was something. Oh, God, that was a good show. And it's currently 70 degrees along the lakeshore, 50 minutes past the hour, and Oscar Osborne has joined us as uh, Terry Ficarelli once stole me. I think it was back in. We were at like 97.5. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they, they, it's the guy who put the Owen radio. The man who put the Owen radio. The man radio, who put man. the Owen radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's Oscar Osbo. Yeah, man, whatever. I always like that saying. That was good. Uh, yeah, he was yeah. he, uh, he was mentioning a guy, too, that, you know, Richard Charles Ford, who I used to run his show oh, yeah. over at WKBZ right. at one yeah. time, way back in the early days. And, and he, was, he was definitely, he had the same colors, but he was... The nastiest guy on radio, and people, oh, he was, people yeah. loved him. He was the Jerry like, Springer actually, of Muskegon, and, and that was. was a fun show. I, and I actually took a, a, a government class from him at Muskegon yeah. Community College on a, a summer uh, class that I was just uh, trying to get some extra credits and kind of a oh, government class. Uh, and, uh, and Richard Charles Ford was teaching it. I had, I had yeah. a great time in it. He was really knowledgeable. He was a great, oh, yeah. he was a yeah. great instructor. I mean, he, it, he'd come in and he'd, he'd get his cup of coffee, and his cup was dirty as dirty can be. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that's the way I like it, and it's this coffee old because it doesn't taste good unless it's old. <laughs> that was Richard Charles Ford. And, you know, and, and to look at him, because he always had the bow tie, and he was a very, very fastidious yeah, dresser. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, that is a surprise to me. I, that, years and years ago, decades ago, as it turns out, um, I was pushing the <coughs> Great Decisions uh, program, and uh, we had it at MCC, and I asked him to be the moderator, and I, I was a little... I knew I shouldn't be the moderator because I was biased, and, and I 
Someone had suggested Richard, and he was was uh, up till, till the date of his death a very very openly um, a liberal man. Oh, he had sure. very strong um, political biases. Oh, yeah, yeah. But as a moderator, he was spectacular. Yeah, and sure. I would imagine no, as a was. teacher, he was the same. Yeah, yeah, he but was. he did one of the great local cable access shows probably of all time. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder, uh, are, are any of those around still? No, I wish I were. Just oh like, just like you, you know, know, Peggy White Night too. I wish I could get yeah. some of her stuff. Is it, That's is all any, gone. Any of that stuff? <coughs> I haven't got from um, Channel Forty or no. Fifty Four or yeah, anything. I think Alexis, uh, her daughter, might have some, but I don't know. You know, and I, I guess if we get into the history of radio, or we in the history of broadcast, broadcasting, and maybe that yeah. should be broadcasting yeah. as, as well, because well, you know, his station, start, his station was around for thirty years. Oh yeah, I'm mean, a lot of starts even and stuff. People didn't know yeah, it, but you know, it was. even 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 with the studio that was in the Occidental. Hotel yeah. in Channel Fifty Four, right? Fifty Four. Uh, that's where that's where Bud started, do Bud yeah. Kelly. And all, and and, yeah. uh, and literally, that was right next door to the Press Club, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which so. was which was interesting. And uh, and I mean, used to walk by there as a kid and look in the window because they had a, st a win window studio yeah. on the first floor on on the on the Third Street side of the Occidental Hotel building. You could look in the TV studio, at Channel Fifty Four. And uh, and again, but the private entrance was right there, going toward Clay Street uh, for the the press club, and only yeah. the, the guys that were from the Chronicle belonged to that. <laughs> you know, all the all the videotapes that I did keep from TV40, my my kids managed to tape over, so that was so uh, much for all that good stuff. There you go. I've I've yeah. still got a box of Channel. 40. I think I got a bingo show. I've, <laughs> I've got I've got, I've got some of, I've got some of ours. Uh, from yeah. the, the, you know, oh, TV from our part, shows. From our okay, shows. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to watch yeah. it. I still have I still have the video of uh, JoJo <laughs> Gerard down at the beach, uh, interviewing Elvis Presley lookalike that we brought down there. Yeah, yeah so that was that was fun. Yeah, that's always a, fun. There's some classic moments there, but it, you know, know, I but was, it takes a lot of time to go through all of that yeah. stuff. And you and know it, that I was at TV40 because I was thinking about this too. Off and on, I was at TV40 for 25 years. Huh? Yeah, well, Probably the really. longest I've been anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's broadcasting. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, I've got, I mean, just just myself, and the, the, the limited of broadcasting that I've done in my life. I mean, we first started out here. Uh, and this was 22 years ago. Yeah. It actually was uh, uh, the the year of 9/11, um, because we got, after about three months of being here, we got preempted on our Friday broadcast. Uh, because of the 9-11 uh, going on in, in uh, New York City. And so I know exactly when we started out here, and a little foggy and a lot of other, other dates. Yeah. But we, we were using, at that time, mini-disc recorder. Oh, yeah. And I bought a, actually it's sitting right here, it's right in this studio. We had it moved over here. It's a mini-disc player recorder. Right. And I've got two or three boxes full of, it, it took like one whole one, the disc, to do like one show, because we were doing three hours yeah, yeah. on Friday afternoon. And I've got, I got two or three boxes of those things, and they all have the right date on them. And I said, I, I, every so often I look at them going, okay, who's going to have the time to listen to that stuff? Right, right. That's a lot right. of junk. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, some cool things that we did. Right. right? Obviously broadcasting from Snowfest and, and doing uh, all the kind of nutty things. I mean, today's show's did. a classic, so there you go. Oh, yeah, what it, it is. <laughs> but, but again, you know, who, who's going to have the time to listen to that or archive it and figure out what was on all of those? Right. Uh, things it'd be it'd be a, a I guess maybe a, a project for uh, some college class or yeah. high school classes well, to know, catalog that stuff. Yeah, TV thirteen are picking them up. Maybe we can pick uh, them eventually, up. Eventually, and I've even talked to the Lakeshore Museum Center so that at some point in time I'm going to give you all of these things, and it's a, a program that happened from this date to this date, and uh, these are all the the recordings of those programs. I don't know what you're going to do with them. <laughs> you know, I'm going to put them probably seal them up and put them somewhere, and so he's saying. Uh, you, know, at ten, you know, 10 or 15 or 100 years from now, they're going to go, what was a mini disc player? Yeah, well, that's just, that's just like... <laughs> you know, what, what is, how do you do that? I, I did even I, play that stuff. I did a lot of videos for uh, uh, Whitehall when they did their, bice, their mm -hmm. centennial or sesquicentennial, whatever yeah. it was yeah. called. And uh, we put it in the in a cornerstone. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be open in 150 years. Well, it's like, okay, who's going to play it? People don't play DVDs now. Yeah, I you know, know. So we put a little portable DVD player in there oh, so there they could... Go. They could play it because yeah. how right. else are they going to figure out? You know what's even on there? It may not be electrical outlet to right. plug it into. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, a place to put a fight or, or, or double A batteries. Right. I mean, that may be well, a thing yeah. in the past. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, yeah, but again, we talked about wire recorders. I when I look at this thing every so often, and it's, it's sitting in the corner of the bedroom, and I pull, I'll open up, and there is some wire in there. Yeah. But I don't know if it's used or not. I have no idea. I have no idea how to operate the thing. Yeah, maybe Cliff would know. You know and, well, he might. He might know yeah. how to operate the thing. But uh, I have no idea. I mean, it could be just blank wire that's on there. Or yeah. it could be, because that wire, once it was used, you couldn't go right over it like you could with magnetic tape. Yeah, no it idea. was imprinted, apparently. Yeah, that was one thing that I did. When, one of the things when they did open the, the, the cornerstone the first time before they put the, the new stuff in, there was a old reel to reel that was in there, but boy, it was so bad. It was so hard to try yeah. to get anything out of it, but it was very boring too. <laughs> I do, I do have one reel to reel player that um, I, I, I guess I gave it to myself as a parting gift from the phone company. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was in my possession and it hadn't been used in a hundred years. Yeah. And they're going, I might as well take that home because I do have some uh, magnetic tape. Yeah. And uh, again, you know, I've got all kinds of magnetic tape from years ago. Really? And one thing, you know, my mother's recordings and my, my wow. grandparents' recordings. And, and I'm going, I just don't have the time to listen to all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, to be able to even catalog it for the family use. Right. You know, so it's, uh, it's difficult stuff. And well, we're going to make it easy enough at the at the exhibit once it opens down at the Lakeshore Museum Center and we'll obviously be talking a lot more about that. But now we're in the collection phase. And yeah, and it'd be, and research it'd, phase. And they could always transfer all those DVDs, or I could transfer all those DVDs to, you know, flash drives or whatever. Sure, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. And, and again, hopefully you'll have a, the ability to call up certain things while you're at the mu museum mm -hmm. saying, and reference WTRU or WKBZ or WMUS. That's what uh, they're and, and be able to, to listen and see the people that were involved. Right. That's them. what they're doing over at the uh, the White Lake Museum, and not the White Lake Museum, the uh, uh, White River Light Station. Okay. And right, also yeah. at Big Savo, I did videos for them, and they put them on flash drive, and they just, people just pop them up, they're on a screen, they watch them or whatever. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. 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 And I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to come up with something like yeah. that before uh, the exhibit opens up. But, uh, We'll have a lot of credit to the Lakeshore Museum Center for putting up with us for all these years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they really have Oscar, uh, thanks for coming in this morning. Hey, no problem. Yeah, we, got some, we got some uh, work to do after this, uh, but uh, and we'll, we'll get to that. But, Is Jim uh, involved? Um, <laughs> No, Jim will just sit here and criticize. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll just sit back and, and muse. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'll be back uh, t uh, tomorrow morning with Brian Worsham and Terry Ficarelli, and I'm sure we'll be talking about sports with uh, all the upcoming football Jeez, seasons. And, you know, we got Fick is in here with us on uh, Thursday. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Have a great uh, Wednesday, and uh, watch yourself if you're down the road diet. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.